our guest speaker today is Joanne Nuaduck. Um, hey everyone. The lady I've been chatting here with. Joanne is uh, going to be talking about sound therapy and obviously as you can tell by the bowls in front of her feet, she's going to be de doing some demonstration as well. So a little bit about Joanne. Joanne Nuaduck's vision for a nurtured world filled with I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. Is that I got my, my personal vision is a world filled with healthy humans. <laughs> I, got, I got new glasses and I'm just I'm moving my head around to try and get it in focus. No worries. <laughs> Born to nurture and promote vibrance, she moves people from challenging situations to positive outcomes through the use of innate gifts and learned skills. Joanne surrounds people with her experience with the intention of it being applied in bite-sized pieces. She is a natural leader and runs the Fabulous at 50 organization and Fabulous Health. Her credentials include registered nurse, metabolic balance coach, integrative stress management practitioner, though a little light and sound therapy, through, uh, okay, author and podcast host. And then she has a quote here. When I challenged my perceptions and made intentional choices, I found my superpower and the world shifted under my feet. Lovely. <laughs> okay, Joanne, I'm just going to let you take over. Awesome. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Linda, for reaching out. Now, I'm not sure how familiar people are with Zoom calls, but you do have the opportunity of going up to view up in the top corner and you can put it on val gallery or, or speaker view. So whether you want to see me so that you can see the, the um, bowls up close, that speaker view, and then you can click it the other way and you can see all three of us. I want to, let me hit my start so I can keep track of my time here. There we are. Now, I understand from Linda that uh, this organization is tremendously supportive and very um, focused on education and that people are interested in learning different ways to improve their health, support themselves, and specifically um, with relationship to neuropathy. So this was near and dear to my heart. When Linda asked, you know, would you be interested in doing a presentation? I just, I jumped at the chance. I'm happy to be here. As a, a, a nurse, not just a nurse, but an oncology nurse, I have definitely seen neuropathy impact people's lives tremendously from the therapies that we give, specifically chemotherapy. But I've also witnessed it as a side effect um, or a result of diabetes and other conditions that, you know, it, it I, I sympathize and empathize with that. My, my own father has... Um, some of that happening, whether it's fingers and feet and toes. So the way today will relate is that um, as a nurse, I, I've seen miracles. I've seen miracles happen within the healthcare system. I became a nurse over 30 years ago. And, and what we're doing now compared to what we were doing back then, people were treating cancer patients or certain conditions as a chronic illness in some cases. And whereas before many years ago, it was, we don't even know how to treat it. So we've done lots and lots and leaps and bounds. And as many of you know, and I personally experience, there's a lot of gaps in our system. And I personally don't believe that our medical system actually can fill all those gaps. I have uh, developed my own philosophy and I think of my own health. I like to, I like analogies and I think of a car and how it is our responsibility to be filling it up with um, how, you know, healthy, with uh, good quality gasolines and oils and take it for regular maintenance, et cetera. Um, but occasionally, no matter how good we take care of it, we might be in a car accident. So, I, you know, that to me is, you know, an illness. And I, I will, or a condition or a disease or a cancer or something that really shakes us to our core. And, but just like we might take a car into the auto body shop to get it repaired, I don't think that it's the auto body shop to teach me about say defensive driving or to cover my insurance or other things. So there's things that we still need to fill in the gaps. 
And so I've come to understand that that's what's going on in the medical system. And so I applaud anyone who reaches past that to say, I want to educate myself. What else is out there that how I can uh, support my health and wellness? And this is what happened to me. My quote really was when I shifted my mindset um, about what was going on in my life, my whole world changed. I, you know, without going into lots and lots of details, just over 10 years ago, I had both um, a personal shakedown when I got divorced, but I shortly thereafter, I also had some health issues that I, you know, I went to my medical um, practitioner and we ran all the tests and for the most part, I was fine. They, they ruled out all the scary stuff, but I still wasn't feeling well. And it, it was like, what am I going to do? I can't live like this. This is impacting my life. And so it was through a series of both personal development, but also going to what I deem as complementary healing practitioners. So not so much alternative. I wasn't turning my back on the medical system. I believe in a both and system. They have to both exist. But it was, this could only do so much. So what else was out there? And I got results. I felt better. I made it made a difference. Like it literally changed my life. So of course, being a nurse, I'm all excited about learning like how and why, how did sound and other things impact me to the point that I could live my life again, in the way that I wanted with energy and feeling well and overcoming, you know, the craziness that was going on in my brain being all stressed and worried about stuff. And that, of course, then set me on a course um, just over around 10 years ago of not only using going to a practitioner, but I wanted to become the practitioner. So what started out as just a personal um, quest to learn more, then became my personal quest to then share this with my clients. So I do still work at Tom Baker Cancer Center. I love my job. I go in a couple of days a week and I do that. But I nurses are allowed to have a uh, private practice, which many people don't know. It's not as commonly known. And so there's lots of us out there offering and taking our skills as a nurse, working with clients one on one or in group sessions in the healthcare and saying this and that, you know, you're doing that, now you can add this. And it's like sitting on a chair. You can sit on a, a chair with one leg or one with four and they each give extra support. So that's what led me to sound. And the sound um, therapy that I got involved with simply was because I said, yes, somebody invited me to the um, introductory course. It was uh, sound, sound wellness fundamentals. And I was their plus one. They were offering a deal. Somebody buys and you can bring a friend. And I went along and they had just restructured everything. And at the end of this session of learning and playing and having fun with bowls, uh, they offered to go through their new practitioner. And I went from, oh, this will be fun on a recreational level to I was their first graduate in their program. And now they have, you know, graduated many since. So I find it both personally healing and, and uh, supportive to bring in relaxation. So before I get started on the experiential side of this, I'm wondering if anyone in this group has a pacemaker. You can either put it in the chat or send a private chat message to Linda. Um, and the reason I want to know is one of the bowls, crystal bowls, when we work in person, it can have a very significant impact on our bodies. And we do work with caution if someone has a pacemaker. Over the computer, it's likely fine, but I'd like to err on the side of caution. Linda, is there anyone that said yes? No, we haven't had anybody yet. Okay, so we're gonna trust that that is okay. And we are trusting that everyone who has signed on to experience the sound is obviously giving permission that they would like to listen and receive. I love experiential type sessions and gatherings. So that's why today, I said, show up with your earphones if you have them. If you do not have earphones, don't worry. You'll still receive the sound and you'll receive the sound for your body and your, and your ears. The reason I say use the earphones is because I have my microphone here set in the middle of the bowls. And when I go from side to side, you'll, 
you, you should get a little bit more of that sensation. And I would say, actually, if you have earphones, you're welcome to put them on or off and decide which you like better. It's totally personal preference. Now, at this point, I'm just going to let you hear what the bowls sound like, and then I'll circle back telling you a little bit more about them. Now that was a bit of a sound test. If anyone could not hear them, um, could you put in the chat right away? So I'd like to make sure that we have everyone being able to hear and experience them. And Linda, you can let me know if, I was joking around with uh, Linda earlier and <laughs> said my glasses are powerful, but not this powerful when I'm sitting away from my computer. Okay, so we do have one person uh, say that they have a pacemaker. Okay. Um, so, and, and uh, maybe is your mic centered or is it exactly where it needs to be? I can center it a bit more. Did you get different sound balance? Um, possibly. No, just let me. So, so the person has, has the pacemaker. The Tibetan bowls are fine, it's the crystal bowl. When I go to use the crystal bowl, I'll leave it to your discretion, whether or not you just want to lower your, your sound. You can take the sound right down. And of course, everybody can lift their sound up or take it down depending on what they would like to receive. Um, and uh, I'll keep this more to a minimum. I use it more for demonstration. Again, I, I, it's, it's more when you're working with a person doing like an hour session that it can have an impact. So just a, a minute demonstration, listening on low or not listening at all will be just fine. Okay, so Joanne, yeah. um, the, the bowl on your left, the, yes. the bowls on your left, those were the ones that couldn't be heard. Okay. Now that one that you just touched, I couldn't hear it. Oh, um, you know what? Thank you. My, um, let me just make sure my little dial, we're going to put it on, it's full surround of sound. This bowl, the last one is actually quite quiet. So yeah, when I use it, I'll bring it a little bit. That one, it was the second one in that I couldn't hear. Okay, there's one. You hear that one? Yeah. Okay. And this one. Can you hear it now? Okay, good. I, now I don't hear you at all. Oh, there we go. Well, there we go. Okay. What's that? Good. Okay. So at this point now for the lady that may, may want to mute, I just want to sh share the sound. I'm just introducing a little bit of the sound to each person right now. This type of bowl can be played in, a, all the bowls can be played in many ways. I was just doing a gong then. But this little crystal bowl is quite magnificent just by running, this is swayed around the edge of the bowl. It creates a vibration and a, a tone and it can get very loud. So Linda, I'm gonna trust you to aim your thumb down if you need it to go, if it's coming across too loud or people, People do have control over whether or not they want it louder or quieter.
I just want people to reflect on, did they have a different sensation? Were they drawn to one style of bowl or the other? You know, to, to you know, did you notice they're both giving off um, beautiful, soothing sounds, but some people may be drawn in, whereas some others may or may not be what feels good in your system. Any feedback or comments? that on. We're good? All right. So before I go further with this, I want to, to share a little bit about the history of sound and, and how it's been used through time and as a healing. Is does anyone, can you see what this is? Does anyone know what this is? The tuning fork. And although it's not used very much in medicine, this has been a friend to the medical practice and healers for a very long time, because we know that our bodies react and respond to vibration. And what these were used to do in a very, very simple way, when we strike it, I'm not sure if you can hear that. This is something that you can for a bit, okay. This was used to diagnose fractures for breaks. Now this one doesn't have a ball on the end. This, this particular type of um, tuning fork is used to wave beside the ears and the sound, but when you have like a ball on the end, you can do this, but it's more comfortable with a ball. It's actually placed in different parts of the body because, and it sends a vibration. And so the, the most common use for it was to place it on a bone that the, the healer or the doctor way back when would think is broken. And literally it vibrates the bones and it would cause more pain. So this was before we had x-rays and it was a way of diagnosing. So I'm not going to put it on my little toe because I actually managed to break my toe a couple of weeks ago. So we won't be putting it on there, but if I put this, if I was to put this on, it would be more painful. What they found though, is when people didn't have breaks, they would strike these and they can be tuned depending on the length, there are different sounds. They can be placed on different parts of the body and on different energy meridians, which we can touch base on a little bit, and it would actually bring about relief. Our bodies can pick up that vibration and it stimulates the cells to work. And one of the easiest ways to think about that, it's a little bit different than exercising, but we all know, um, let's say even stagnant water, like a, a, like a, a lake, if you have water coming in and you have water going out, there's a constant flow of water and that's a healthy lake. But when you don't have the water coming in and you don't have water going out, it gets stagnant. Well, that's the same for our bodies is that we need to do so, whether it's fluid in and out, nutrition in and out, we also need to have good thoughts coming in and out of our minds, but moving our, our um, energy through exercise, and activity is one way of keeping that flow going. Also our circulatory system and our lymphatic systems, we know that they move better and more efficiently when we're moving our bodies. Well, what's fascinating is we can also move and stimulate our cells inside of us through vibration and through energy. So I know Linda, you mentioned that you had a talk last year on light therapy. That is one of the other healing techniques that I use that has tremendously supported myself and my husband. He had severe arthritis set into his neck and couldn't even do a shoulder check. And we understood that light therapy, a light applied to the neck, which gives a frequency, a, a light energy. Our body doesn't mind whether it comes through sound or pulsations of light placed on his neck. And I had something with my feet it helped relieve the pain in a non-pharmaceutical way. So when light therapy is used, even with say pharmaceuticals like gabapentin, it can sometimes lower the dosage. 
But what I was fascinated about was the connection between light therapy and sound therapy and all of this, the calm and thread, even thought, everything has a frequency. Everything, if we go back to, I know for me, it was grade 10 science. So I don't know the age of the people that are on, but whether it was your science class in junior high or high school, you know, I remember my science teacher walking in and pounding on this solid oak desk saying, is it solid? And we're all like, yeah. And he goes, is it moving? And everyone's like, no. And he goes, wrong, <laughs> right? And he goes, and we're all like jumping because we were getting into molecular science that all the molecules in the universe vibrate. Gases are very far apart, okay? Liquids are closer together and solids are really solid, right? But they're still separate and they're still moving. They just move slower and you get down and down to sub- you know, this is beyond the science that I know, but it's so important for us to understand that because people go, oh, well, this is all woo woo. And I'll address that. What's fascinating is I'm very science based. So I understand this is not woo woo. Sometimes how it's used and sometimes practitioners come across in that very spiritual floaty way, which is beautiful and soothing. But the actual science of how sound and frequency, whether it's light or sound, impacts our body is scientifically proven so that is a definite and what is fascinating and what i i understand in my practice is that there is the science of what can happen and then the art of how we use it so whether that's the science of mixing paints and the artistic ability on how you paint or the science of what's going on with our bodies in the medical profession and the art of how we use it and then into things like this. So what I use sound and light therapy for tremendously is not to say I'll fix that issue, but that I will help support your body to heal itself. That is what I use these for myself is sound and light and thought shifting to positive thoughts. All of that can relax our bodies. And when our bodies are in a relaxed state, that is when healing happens. So that is what we call the parasympathetic system, the heal, rest and digest. What happens in today's society is that we often are in what we call the stress mode. The sympathetic nervous system kicks in and it's life-saving. We are meant to have that system happen when we are running from danger that saber-toothed tiger is after us like our kid goes too close to the edge of uh, um, a ledge and you want to grab them back it, it's our we have quick reflexes then and we move fast and it sends out our adrenaline and everything is pumping so that is a survival mode we need that but unfortunately our lives are set up these days to have that happen too frequently and for sustained length of time, instead of occasionally, and now let's go back to the relaxation. We need that stress and let's go back to the relaxation. When people learn to bring various different methods of relaxation into their system, add sleep, have positive thoughts, have anything that gets their body working the way it needs to work, then we have less illness, and we can cope better with illnesses or conditions such as neuropathy that we already have. We can, we can bring the pain down because our bodies can handle it better. Joanne, I just, I just put it in the chat box for people. There was an, a research article um, on the government website, right? And it was about fibromyalgia. And I know I didn't spell it right. Um, and the results uh, that some people had from the low frequency uh, sound were absolutely fabulous. It's so. incredible. It's honestly, I, I, it's wonderful. If anyone wants, I didn't want to make, I, I appreciate you putting that in there and there's lots of data out there. I have like white papers on, on sort of brain injuries, how they can be supported. That could be a whole nother talk. But the, to reduce fibromyalgia, to reduce pain, like light is actually FDA approved for increasing circulation. Well, everything needs increased circulation. That's the what I was talking about, the lake, the water in and the water out. You need that flowing in your system. 
it can relieve pain and it, it can also um, reduce inflammation. Well, there's almost no condition that any of us have that doesn't have one of those three out of whack. And so when we can bring this in, I mean, it's low cost. I mean, I won't say low cost if you buy the bowls yourself. That's why you pay to go to a practitioner and experience that in person. But there's so many different recordings that are out there. I'm actually within the next week going to be doing a recording of similar to what I'm sharing here today so that people can listen. I, I you know, I gift that to my um, clients because anything we can do to bring the body into that parasympathetic state, that relaxation state, it allows the body to work better. It allows, our bodies are self-healing. We are little walking miracles. The more, when I got back into studying my nursing again, I did a refresher course and I had never felt such reverence for things when I went more and more into that kind of suboptonic level of how we function. So it's very fun to bring this in. At this point, I, I love, I want to bring in the experiential. I want to do a bit of an experience and then I'll continue talking a little bit more because there's many different ways. The bowls themselves, I'll explain afterwards, are an ancient practice and how we're using them today is a modern adaptation. So we'll just, I'm gonna ask everybody to just sit in a comfortable way, lie down if that's, um, you know, feels comfortable for you with or without your headphones on. If you have a glass of water, I take a glass of water. And the intention that we're setting today is relaxation. Sometimes our intentions and what we get people to think about are other things, releasing something that's bothering them and so forth. I am focusing on relaxation today because I'm not working with you personally. You know, if somebody, I just want to put it out there that sometimes people you know, may even get an emotional response. I want to warn people. I've had people just brought to tears because it just feels so relaxing to them. And maybe they haven't felt relaxed in a long time or something comes up. So I want to don't be shy or embarrassed. If something comes up for you and you're feeling like, oh, is this normal? Likely it is. Um, just put something in the chat. But right now, this is just a very simple relaxation sequence with these bowls. And then we'll circle back and we'll do some more Q&A and I'll share a bit more about how they're used.
So just take a moment to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, come back into your body if you were very, very relaxed. And before I start sharing a bit more, is there any feedback or questions that anyone has? I noticed that some of them um, sounded very much like church bells. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm almost thinking it's maybe not a coincidence that church bells are have that same vibration. I am thinking the same thing. Very good observation. Mm -hmm. So Louise says it's wonderfully relaxing. Beautiful, beautiful. We did have one lady who um, I should have realized she's very sensitive to vibration. Okay. And so well, she ended up having to go. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. And if she wants to call me or talk about anything, make sure that she's feeling okay, that you welcome to give her my number. Um, mm -hmm. And that, and that is, that's why I'm saying people can take it right down. Some people are very sensitive to vibration we have it happening in our lives every single day and mm -hmm. i'll talk about that a little bit but i want to share um a little bit more about the history so tibetan bowls as we call them come in all different sizes and shapes and I, when i say shapes um i guess looks is more you know how thin they are how thick they are i have I have uh, several other bowls. This is a set that is intended to work together, um, but I have some individual bowls and they were initially made by monks and they were hammered. They were hand hammered and each hammer, they would chant Om. And, you know, I don't know everyone in your group here, but many people, if they've ever gone to say a yoga class or something is, Ohm is a sound that we make that resonates through our body. It's very grounding. And, and these bowls, by the time they made it, it was believed that it was made to their energy. And they'd use it to help put them in a meditative state. And then, again, that, that, this gets into a whole other teaching. But I think I, I believe that most people understand that our brains have different brainwave states. Our brain is in a different frequency or wavelength when we're asleep in Delta or when we're awake and we can range from theta and beta and alpha and each one has a different system. So if a bowl or some other sound wellness tool is used, it can help trigger our minds into that relaxation. So not only is it having a physical impact on us it's on the energy of our minds and again sometimes when people talk about energy you know I've heard some go oh that's I don't know it's just they can discount it and I'm going but it's science I mean are you freaked out about a magnet because it has energy going around I mean it's it's just basic science that absolutely everything in our world planets and more have some sort of energy magnetic fields and we do as well. And so this set of bowls, for those that have ever um, studied a bit about chakras, is it is believed in many, many cultures that um, in addition to our physical body, we have the energy body and there's power centers. So at our root, sort of the tailbone, what I'm sitting on um, would be this note, would be this bowl. And this is all about safety. Think of the root chakra is when you're first born. What is the most important thing? Feeling safe because you're completely vulnerable. So when we use this bowl, we can help energize that particular chakra. And we can work our way up going to bowl tuned to C. We go into our sacral. And our sacral has to do with our creativity. Think of how creative little children are. So as we grow, um, we move on up and we get our power center. Like most people know the term solar plexus. Oh, that was a hit to the solar plexus. We often use it just in our everyday words, but sometimes we don't always know what it means. 
and that would be this bowl. So that, that's impacting our solar plexus. Was it too low or too loud? No, couldn't hear it. Oh, okay. It's a very subtle one. Each of the bowls have more than one note, and so I had to bring in the higher notes. Think of a foghorn. It goes long and low, but you don't really hear it. It doesn't sound much louder when you're close to it. And the lower, you know, apparently elephants, they make a sound that's so low. It's below our hearing, but it can radiate out two kilometers to warn other elephants. I mean, it's amazing how sound impacts us. And then we get our heart chakra. So with the, the D bowl, then we move up to our throat. And this one, this one's really important. And I work with this one for people that feel that they can't speak. They, they have so much inside of them and they're not sharing what they really want. They, they get into a conversation and they, they just choke. That can be emotional blocks that reside in here. And um, again, it's sort of the development of our lives. We learn to get, think of the, the two-year-old that's like, I do it myself. That's getting their solar plexus in there. They're starting to get their autonomy. Our heart as we, and, and when they're younger, it's all about themselves. But when we get older, we learn to truly love and understand and become empathic and have empathy for other people and ourselves. Moving up to our throat is when we really learn to speak and have ideas of our own. So that's actually getting into our adolescence and we're sharing our ideas with the world. And then when we get up into this, this is getting into our third eye. This is trusting our intu intuition. This is as we get to be an older, and, you know, into our adulthood, we learn what is right. Sometimes people say, how do you know that? And I'm sure there's people on this call that just go, I don't know how I know it. I just know it. It's that gut feeling. It comes from our intuition. And we usually refer to that as our third eye. And then up at the top here, this gets into our crown chakra. Yeah. Um, so we had a few comments since you, I last talked to you. Uh, one said uh, that it's also very Buddhist and it reminds her of Tibetan Buddhist temples. Mm -hmm. um, Our Lady with the Pacemaker said uh, it's too much for vibration for her, so sorry. Um, sorry. And then finally, so yeah. for patients whose anxiety is felt in the stomach, which bowls would you use? Okay, yeah, I'll circle right back to that. And I'll just end with this one um, is, is meant to support the um, crown chakra, which is our connection uh, shall we say to spirit that I'm just going to say to all that is regardless of religion, regardless of, you know, beliefs and faith. Um, I, I, most people I know understand there's something greater than themselves. And that's that connection. The more say spiritually enlightened we are. So bowls for the stomach, um, you can use specific bowls and that would, you know, be the, the, for sacral. So one tune to C and to G would be, um, and even the root chakra would be in that stomach area. But overall, when you use the bowls together, you can use any bowl for any area because sometimes it's that you need to bring a little more love to an area. Sometimes you need to bring a little more solidness to an area. So we can play around with them, but the overall stomach is often like related to anxiety, as she mentioned. So doing a sequence of bowls helps bring about that relaxation. So it really wouldn't matter which bowl. I know for myself, and um, I have the bowl, I keep it upstairs. This is, I have, this is my clinic room when, when we're not in shut down tight conditions. I can, I will see people in person here. Uh, but right now I've been doing everything online and Zoom just for safety for all. And the overall relaxation is what lowers the anxiety and can help. And then we can specifically do work on a, on a specific area for, for anxiety and for, for stomach. Yeah. So how long does it last? A session? Um, well, I'm thinking more after the session. If you oh, had something like session. anxiety and you came okay. for a session and then how long would the anxiety that, feel? That relieved? is something that is very individual. 
Mm. Because it depends on what is going on. But, you know, an example, say with the light therapy that I work with, I sometimes actually put, I shared this with my sister. She was in a hurry. (laughs) She was about to drive. And we actually put the lights on her set to the relaxation mode and did bowls at the same time. But when I, when I do a session, say with the lights, because I often mix them, they get several days of that really wonderful effect. And it all depends on then the practices. Are they walking right back into a, a busy, busy life? Or are they then doing sort of the homework that I might assign that includes let's bring in the sound therapy? You know, and, and what I wanted to touch base on now is today's focus was mostly about the bowls, you know, but there's various aspects to sound healing. And we understood there's the bowls, we understood there's the crystal bowl, you know, crystal bowls are amazing when doing meditations and say a yoga practice. What's wonderful is if you were sitting here with me, I have my clients close their eyes, I do the bowl, and they, it it's, the sound is so enveloping. It's hard to tell where the bowl is coming from. She was like, did you walk around? I swear it was coming from behind me. And I'm like, nope. But it bounces off and it all moves around. And crystal, this is a crystal bowl, amplifies. We know that it's used in technology and in electronics. We use crystal quartz. It amplifies something that's already there. So this bowl can amplify. So working with this type of bowl, you need to be very careful that you're working on the positive and that you have positive intentions with it because we want to amplify that. These bowls are used close to the body, but not on the body. Whereas a Tibetan bowl, I could place this, say I was having some knee issues. I might want to, whoops. I might want to gong it. And we can actually do a sound bath and they can be placed right on the body. I know that for my husband, when he has trouble sleeping, he'll lie down and we can place him on his belly or on his back. He'll lie on the couch and we gong it. And that reverberation, just like I said, it can it can hurt a break because it literally is moving the bones. That reverberation in us can bring about a relaxation and then we sleep better. And when we sleep better, we're healthier. The other, so the Tibetan bowls, crystal bowls, I already talked about the tuning forks, but I'll just um, mention that they come in all different lengths and sizes and they can be used for the ears listening because it tells the brain something different. And if you use them together, they can be used single or together when these two, what happens if you can see that they're different lengths? I'm not sure if you can see that there, maybe if I hold it like that. They're different lengths. So this one gives a different sound than this one. If, you, if you've ever heard the term binomial, binaural beats. So what it means by means different is this one, if you have it going in one ear, one sound, and the other, the other sound, the frequency numbers measured in Hertz cancel each other out and the brain just knows the difference. And the difference, you can look up what brainwave, this gets gets very technical, but you can look up the brainwave. So you can choose two and use them that purposely put the brain in a certain brainwave that is either relaxation or energizing or, you know, a sleep mode. So you can actually help support the brain without pharmaceuticals to go into say sleep or relaxation in a wonderful way. So they're used to relax the body. I'll strike. Are there there studies say on like people with MS or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's um, doing that kind of thing? Yep, absolutely. So that was, that is, and there's a lot around music. So music and the study of music and sound, like I've been using sound tools, like the actual healing tools, but the courses that I take go into how sound impacts us. You know, just thinking of music, I, I, you know, I hope that everybody has seen some of these heartwarming videos where somebody that say severe Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, they put on some music, especially something from their past, and they actually come to life. I saw one the other day, it was a former um, ballerina, a professional ballerina that was 
is in a wheelchair and very, very withdrawn and, and, you know, quite ill. They put on music from Swan Lake and she opened up and started doing all her moves from the song in Swan Lake. And it's like, it brought tears to my eyes because this is uncharted territory. Just like years ago, it was like, ooh, developing pharmaceuticals or developing, you know, x-rays and scans or surgeries. You know, at one point in time, we didn't, we didn't know how to do refined surgeries. Now they don't even have to cut you open for many surgeries. They just go in with little fiber optics. That sounded like Star Wars way back then. So now this type of thing is actually where um, uh, technology or science is going. It's a matter of the funding to get all the science, scientific um, data behind it. So a lot of people go by just the anecdotal, the empirical, like, you know, hey, I went and it made me feel better. So why not? It's like going for a massage. It's a sound massage. Mm. Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, so with sound, just sticking with, you know, easy, um, shall I say, low budget, you know, uh, type things, finding some music, going online, there's YouTube videos and sound, and you can often just put something in saying um, sleep or delta sleep brainwaves or relaxation music and bring it up. Now go through a whole bunch because you might put something on and go, oh, I'm not really into birds, but oh, I like this rain or I like this music or that music. And they're purposely set to frequencies that relax the body. And when we relax the body, we already mentioned you heal. And I want to throw a word out there called nitric oxide. Um, I don't know if people know what nitric oxide is, but it's a substance within us naturally occurring. And it's part of our healing cascade. And when people have, say, uncontrolled sugar levels with diabetes, they have low nitric oxide levels. So nitric oxide, and that is why, and this was only discovered in the 80s, that they won a, a Nobel Prize, the, the two gentlemen, excuse me, I'm just going to change my uh, blind here because I know it's throwing my lighting off. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sunshine is coming around. Uh, they won a prize because it was so revolutionary that this substance within us, when it is at a low level, there is poor healing. Well, that's what people with diabetes have. It causes, it restricts, it's a vasodilant, it restricts um, the flow of um, blood and limb. If it's at low levels, it increases it at higher levels. And so that's actually one of the reasons why people with diabetes have neuropathies because they have low levels of nitric oxide. So light therapy, sound frequencies, actually I could get into a whole thing of breathing, breathing through our noses. We create nitric oxide naturally through our nose. If we're breathing through our nose slowly and calmly, not big jerky breaths, we create it and we inhale it into our lungs. It gets taken through our body. If we breathe through our mouths, which a lot of people chronically do, especially if they're stressed, we're not, we're not developing and breathing in our nitric oxide naturally. So we have lower levels of that nitric oxide and that has an impact. So learning and retraining ourselves, there's people that can retrain proper breathing habits through our nose. We need that nitric oxide, but to boost ourselves up, that's one of the main reasons why I use my light therapy and my sound therapy and some breathing techniques is because I know that it naturally in a safe way brings up uh, the nitric oxide levels. And there can be, I would never promise a reversal, but I have witnessed people getting more sensation back in their feet and their hands by using these types of uh, healing therapies. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where we are. My phone closed down, so I don't know where we're at for the time right now. Um, we are at 2.01. Okay. Does anyone have a specific question? Because I'm happy to, I know what I can share with you still, but I'm happy to just um, let the conversation be led by questions. Um, we have a, what sound therapy do patients do at home to supplement your sessions? Okay. And what about the Calm app? Yes. So the Calm app is really awesome. I have it. Um, I say download whatever app works for you. If you resonate with it, anything that helps you um, bring about some calm 
and it doesn't mean that you have to walk around like everybody's in a Zen mode all day long. It's actually, we're healthiest when we can react quickly, you know, get like respond to a situation and how fast we bring our body back down to calm is a sign of how healthy we are. If something happens and jars us and it takes hours, we feel shaken. That is a sign that you may want some help or you may want to focus on this, whether you're doing it yourself through your own self practices and, or with a practitioner. So yes, the calm act is, is actually really quite fun. There's lots of different meditations and things on there. Just pick what you like really has to, it, everything's so individual, pick what, what works for you. In fact, they've done some studies, you know, how we talk about relaxation music, you know, like classical music has been shown to bring down blood pressure and relax people. One mm -hmm. caveat, that is if you like that music, if you, do, they actually have shown that relaxation music that typically is relaxing, if that is music someone doesn't like, it raises their blood pressure up. So there's some people that, that I, I don't get it, but that like say that screamo music, they've actually studied, it, it brings their blood pressure down. Now, usually that's when someone's in a state of irritated. That gets into a whole different thing. If they're angry or grieving, going for something hard hitting and, and upset and angry actually calms them because it's an outlet. You know, my, my husband um, was widowed with his first marriage and he remembers, you know, he was a runner and he would run and he would listen to really hard hitting music. That was his therapy. He goes, I listen to it now. And I kind of like, how did I do it then? But that's what he needed then. Now he goes, if you had played something relaxation, I would have wanted to, you know, I had all that grief. I would have wanted to scream or hit something. I needed something to match my emotions. So I would caution people and because I believe go where somebody's at. Like if you put on, and I even get in this mood, if I'm really go, 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 if I put on something that's too, what I would say too Zen, it irritates me. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for that because it's like jumping from this level to this level too fast. So pick something that just relaxes you a bit and if and other days I can have the spa music on all day I love it you know sometimes it's like Ooh. but I know enough now that if I'm irritated by something that's relaxing then there's something more inside I have to go and look at right it's about knowing our bodies um you had another question in there it was oh self um care practices if we have a moment I could do a very simple share on my favorite um, sound is actually doing toning. You don't have to own bowls. You have your own instrument, your voice. And toning is when uh, there's many ways to tone. The one I understand is called, it's a sacral vowel toning. And there is a different sound for each of the chakras. And, and chakras also have a different color associated with them. If you look behind me here, it, we have red at the root, orange for creative um, sacral. We have yellow for the solar plexus. Green is actually for the heart. And then blue is for our throat chakra. We get into the violet and indigo for, for our third eye and, and crown chakra. Each one of those, there is a belief that a, a sound or a tone is associated with them. So, and I'd be happy, um, you, I know you have the emails for people, you could either give them mine and they could ask for it, or I could share, I have a document that will say what the chakra is and the vowel tone, and you could send them that document and you could practice this yourself. So if everyone's open to this, it, we don't have to go through a long session. It's a bit like, I say these tools, it's a bit like having a deck of cards. You have the deck of cards, that's the science, you have the, the physical thing, and now you have, you could do thousands of different games with it. So once we know the chakras and the tone, you could play around with them. So if everyone wants, to, you can do this in the privacy of your own home right now, is the sound for the root chakra is a very guttural, low sound, and it's like, uh, like, like a hug. And all we simply do is make that sound. So I invite you to just join me on that and just go. Uh, and 
I know that when people first start out, it seems very self-conscious. The first time I did it, it was my throat was like, ah, and it didn't really work. But when you sit there and I invite you afterwards, you know, or in the shower, it's really wonderful in the shower. If you want to feel more grounded, do three or four of those in a row, just slow breath in through your nose. Uh, and I imagine if you take a moment, you can, I know for myself, when I got more in touch with my own body, I could feel it resonate through my whole body. Um, Linda, could you feel any, like your own vibration happening there? Um, I can, yeah, really much in my throat though. In your throat. So work in your throat, but as you learn to relax your throat, you, you may start to feel it resonating in your, in your chest as well. So it's a practice. Yeah, I to feel it a little bit up. I have damage in my throat, so. Okay. It's so it might be impacted. Kind of there, yeah. Okay. So it's a practice. And uh, the next one up is an ooh sound. Like you might, might like, ooh, um, uh, yeah, just, I don't know what, what's ooh, <laughs> like blue, the sound of blue, it's an ooh sound. And, uh, um, and so just letting that roll off. And that is to do with your creativity, um, the, the uh, sacral chakra. And doing that a couple times in a row. And the next one up is the solar plexus. That one is O, the standard O. O. We move up to our heart. We go to our throat and it's an E sound. No, sorry, I, my apologies. Our third eye, the sound is A. And our crown chakra is E. Now, a lot of people find it very hard to get up there. What we know about sound is that intention plus frequency equals healing. And what's most important is intention. There's a lot of science and many, many writers out there that have books and books and books on sound. And they all know that our intention outweighs perfection. So when we're doing this, if someone really struggles with, I just say, go from your lowest note to your highest. Don't worry if it's like right on. Only my friends that are professional singers get it right on. But doing this type of practice is like a, um, uh, it's, it's a, uh, a sound, it's meditative. And um, let me see the, the time. So it, when we go from the bottom to the top, you can use it in many ways. You can go bottom to top and then top to bottom, or you can go bottom to top and then jump down to an ohm to bring people down. Uh, with my Fabulous at 50 that I mentioned that I, I run for a women's group, we've had to move from in-person to online. And last night I had my first of three sort of a taste of fabulous. It's for women in midlife. And uh, last night was all about community connection. Next week and in the future, each week will be a different theme. We'll have community connection and I'm going to be doing sensational self-care. And so on a monthly basis, I'll be leading us through uh, some sound, some toning like that for a few minutes with an intention of de-stressing, going into the holidays. It's what I use on a daily practice. And then people can blend in, you know, things like bowls if they happen to have one, or if they don't, they can listen to recordings. It looks like somebody maybe just put something on. Oh, it was just Sam um, telling us that he was moving from the phone to the computer. Okay, fair enough. 
does anyone have a specific question right now you'd like me to address? Um, while people are thinking of questions, I had one. Sure. Um, I, ha I have this weird thing where in the mornings, not mm -hmm. always, but sometimes, I wake up and it feels like my entire body is vibrating. Mm. And, I, and I've mentioned that to a couple of people. And, and they have, uh, a couple of the people that I've mentioned it to have said that they also get that weird, that sensation, like their whole body is vibrating. Right. Do you, I, have you ever that? Do you... I've had that sensation myself. Um, there can be a couple of different reasons. Uh, what's interesting is, is when you wake up and your body jerks is our body is completely full of different hormones. They are the messengers. That's how every bit of our body speaks to each other. Most people, they hear the word hormone and they think of testosterone and estrogen, mm -hmm. but we literally, every single thing, every function in our body is either turned on or turned off by a specific hormone. And many of them don't even have name. They have like, their names are HG, like their numbers and names. I won't even get into them. It's certainly not an area that I've memorized but we have, you know, our cortisol levels and we have our adrenaline and our dopamines and all of this. What's fascinating is sometimes the same hormone, the same hormones, they're like ingredients. They can be used for all different areas of our body. So we need some of it, you know, for our, our sexual function. We need some of this for our stress in a good way of the quick response to things. But if we have too much of it going, then we go into chronic stress and then that actually depletes our system. So sometimes people are actually dealing with um, adrenal fatigue, like they, they're, there's too much on. I know for my, per and this is just my personal experience. Um, so I'll just back up for just a moment before that is, so that vibrating feeling in my experience can be two things. One, have you ever been just so excited about something your whole body feels like it's vibrating and tingling? So that is when the hormones are being sent off and it's a good thing because it's getting you geared up. You're about to do something. Maybe you're going on a, a date for the first time, whether you're 16 or 65, it's still something exciting or you're about to speak on stage or you know the family's all coming over for Christmas. There can be things that get our bodies tingly we're often more aware of it, though, if we're just waking up because we don't have other things going on in our, our world. If you're, I know that when I was waking up and feeling as if the inside of me was all jubilee and weak, vibrating, that was more of a sign that I was having chronic stress even when I didn't know. And that's when I ran into some heart palpitation issues. I didn't have heart disease, but I definitely I have an issue with the, the pacing of my heart. And when I was fatigued and stressed, even though I was, shall we say, deluding myself thinking I wasn't because I just didn't understand the stress. Um, it's the body vibrating. Your, your body first thing in the morning is already flooding foot of hormones. So doing practices that can help completely relax the system down, even beyond what's being done now is often what's called for. Fascinating. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have a question? If not, I can keep sharing about different things. Maybe even ask people, like we said, we have until 2.30, we still have 15 minutes. Would people be interested? I shared sort of, here's how to do a vocal toning, but we didn't really do one where we just went through it. It can take like four or five minutes max and still give us 10 more minutes at the end. Would people like to be led through one right now? We can do a thumbs up or a yes, no. I'm just waiting to see. If sure. I know it takes a moment to get to your computer and type. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting for that, I just want to say thank you uh, for today. Oh, you're welcome. It's been so today fun. was really interesting. Um, so we had a, a yes. and I, But I also want to thank um, Louise, who's our hidden under the guise of CNA uh, events. She's our thank secretary. You. And she, um, she's been helping me through my Zoom woes and um, my at-home internet issues. Yes. <laughs> she's here in case I die and Zoom just goes away, which has happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
at previous sessions. So thanks very much, Louise, for all your support. Yes. So we have two yeses. So let's go ahead. And awesome. go ahead. Okay. So we're going to go with yes. Now, again, if you notice, I keep drinking my water. I'm going to put a little plug in there for water is that no matter any of us, whether we have a condition going on with us or not, we need fluids in our system. I'll just put a caveat. Unless you've been told that you have some kidney or renal impairment and you're on a restricted fluid diet, most of us, the simplest way to tell if you're getting enough fluid or water into you is to take your weight in pounds. So let's just, I don't know, let's just use 160 because it's easy to divide. Divide by two, that gives 80. That is how many ounces of water you need per day. So there's eight ounces in a cup. So divide that, that means that's 10 cups of water a day. And if you prefer liters, that would be two and a half liters. Most people go, oh, I'm not getting close to that. And what happens is when we are chronically like we're not into the point of fully dehydrated, you need emergency help and need to go to the hospital and get fluids. But when we chronic, it's just like having chronic stress, low grade chronic stress erodes our health. Low grade chronic dehydration also doesn't allow our body. We're made up of, you know, like 80% water. We need to have water flushing through our system, making it work. I have a friend who's a chiropractor and she stresses over and over and over again. When someone comes in in pain, she, the first thing she does is how much water are you drinking? It has a real big impact on pain. And I know it has an impact on um, neuropathies. So if you are feeling like you're having a flare up, I would, that would be my first go-to is what have, how, what have I drank today? And I'm not talking about caffeine, caffeinated or, or um, carbonated, don't count. So it's only like herbal teas, water, very watered down juice. You don't want that much sugar, but like a, a flavored water, something like that. So that aside, so that's why I'm taking my sips of water. Again, get comfortable. Don't be shy. You can listen if, if that's what you prefer, but you really get the best benefit. Your body loves to hear yourself. So if you give these sounds to yourself, and then we'll come back down. I think we'll just do one, let's see, we have, we can do um, two of each level, the sound. And then once we get to the top, I'm going to ask everyone to pause. We won't say anything for about one minute. And just take note of your body. Do you feel any tingly on a good way? Like this is my body's alive. And then we'll drop down and do three ohms to make sure everyone's um, is very grounded because this can impact people and, and, and make them feel really, you know, um, energized or lighter. Okay. Uh,
Now three ohms to bring yourself back down. Om. Om. Wiggle your fingers, your shoulders a roll and your feet a roll and come back. That was a sample. It's really good to use just to set your day and um, or in a moment when you're feeling anxious using this. And even if you did one of each, you can use it in so many ways just to support yourself. I don't know whether people want to put, you know, a thumbs up or a yes or something if they actually felt like a little shift in their body at some point. I did feel a different kind of tingling down one side of my leg. Mm -hmm. um, what I find interesting is that it's very much like the deep breathing exercises, right? So mm -hmm. you breathe in through your nose, you almost hold it for a second there and that slow breath out. And that really helps bringing the oxygen uh, into your yeah. body and into your lower lungs so that yes. your body can get more better benefit from the oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. When I focus on a session that's mostly about the, the, um, the toning, we do talk about bringing it down. This is an introduction into your system and the possibilities, you know, mm -hmm. starting off a shower, doing it at some point, if you have the Glaston showers, it really resonates. But I find it's, it's, I found it really good for me as a way of getting into a meditative state when, especially when I'm too busy, people think of, I have to sit down and meditate and I have to just think of nothing for an hour. And those that aren't practiced at it, it's like, Oh, I thought of something and oh, that's not working. That This is a real sample of me number of years ago trying to meditate. I'd be like, mm, oh, what are my kids doing? And it was, you know, stressing me out. But I find that when I'm focused on the sound, I can't think of something else. I'm focused on my breath and my sound. So it puts us in a, it is a type of meditation, but it is a vocal meditation. And uh, it's personally my favorite self-care tool. Right. Mm -hmm. We got a yes, very relaxing. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if nobody has any questions, um, anybody? No? Okay. <laughs> so we've, we've got five minutes to spare. I want to thank you again. I want to thank Louise again. And thank everybody for coming out today. Um, mm -hmm. It was really good to see such a good turnout. And uh, the, the registration for next month is up already. So you can go ahead and register for those if you want. Nice. Uh, Love okay. it. And, and I'll just put it out there. So what I'll do, um, Linda, if you're okay with this, is I want to be respectful, of course, people's emails, is I will send you a document and, and a link that if people want more information, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I can either give you some more information, point them in the right direction. The mentors that I worked with, uh, Sharon and Ed Karn, are, uh, run the Sound Wellness Institute. They, um, they understood that sound is a very powerful tool. And there's so many practitioner or people out there saying they're a practitioner. And they've taken an online two-hour course. And it's that's not really accurate. You don't really want to go to a, a doctor or a massage therapist that's just taken an online course. So I'd like to put it out there that, that there are people that are truly certified and, and um, uh, have good training. You want to make sure you're working with someone that has good training. And these two have incredible resources, you know, and, and at their website, you can go and there's downloads that you can get. And I'm happy to direct people there because they have just an incredible supply. You can download some relaxation music and it's uh, this, uh, sound wellness is what okay. people can 
So oh, yeah. I can send the link out for you. And, uh, you know, they're dear friends of mine and they just, they're set up more for just those straight downloads. I'm developing mine. I've mostly worked in person. Now that I'm moving more onto mine, I will be developing those on a move forward mm -hmm. basis. And I encourage people to just play around, play around with their voices. If there's one, you know, what's fun with that, as I mentioned, is you can tie in, you can just go from your high to your low and, and play around with it and, and just see how it makes your body feel. Okay, yeah. So thank and you. you had also said you would send us the, the sheet with the shot. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so if it's okay with you, I will email it out to all yes. the attendants today. Yes. And then actually to everybody who even registered, I'll send it out yeah, to. Absolutely. And then when I put this video up on the website, I'll also um, include that information there. So it'll yeah. be up on the website. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. And, you know, I do invite, as I mentioned, if there's any ladies in the group in sort of the age, you know, in midlife, I, I won't put an age to it. They're more mm -hmm. than welcome to join in, uh, you know, the, any of the Fabulous of 50 events as well, because I will be offering this type of thing as part of, you know, it, it'll be a, a monthly offering. Uh, on a move forward basis and so it's a way of them getting that as well and uh, just getting a little tune up okay as well so I'm happy thank you so much everyone and I wish you a wonderful day thank you